All right, what I want to do today is I'm going to do a little bit of wrap up on the images, uh, the images that we did in the activity uh, last time. Um, I want to talk about those because uh, those brought out some good points. Uh, I, I like what I've seen uh, from them, and uh, I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about them. I also want to talk about uh, creating an animated GIF, which I did, uh, and we can take a look at that. Then we're going to get into audio, and um, I want to I want you to think about like what makes what makes uh, you know when would you use audio on a multimedia site? What does audio bring to the table? And then we'll talk a little bit about sort of the fundamentals um, with it. Again, I think it's important to understand that uh, because when you hear these terms, you know, um, with the you know 24 bit audio or a sample rate of such and such. You know, exactly what does that mean? So I think it's important to at least have a sense of that, uh, so to have an understanding as you're creating uh, multimedia works. Um, all right. With the animated GIF, is there a plugin that you need to be able to open that? You should not. No. Okay. It should. It, it, it's typically a function of a browser. Okay. So. Um, it could be that the browser doesn't handle it very well. And that's the project file. You, you included the project file. Or maybe I just saved it as that. Uh, okay. It well, wouldn't open in GIF. I was okay. able to view it in my browser, but not actually open it. Okay, interesting. Uh, maybe, I, maybe I messed up when I uploaded it. Well, we can take a look at that. All right. Let's look at some of these images that we did. Start looking at Nicole's. First of all, did you use Photoshop or did you use a GIF? Photoshop. Okay. Uh, and can you describe briefly what you did with this? I know you wrote it up on. Uh... Um, well, basically, the picture of me was actually at Cedar Point mm -hmm. after I won that giraffe. Okay. And I don't remember the name of the tool that I used, but it took out like a huge amount of the background. Mm -hmm. So I got like the big stuff out. Right. It was basically, I can use it also like as like a circular or like rectangle mm -hmm. form. I mean, after I did that, um, I zoomed in really close and for some reason the names aren't coming out to me of the titles of the um, tool I used. Tools. Um, but I used this one that if I clicked near my like, at certain parts of my body, like it would get really close and take out the little tiny pieces. Right. It's like it's like an intelligent kind of thing. I yeah. forget what they call it. They and call it, it a smart it, select or something the, like, like that. And the uh, arrows were like moving around me too. Okay. Let's take a look real quick. Maybe we can decipher that. Yeah. In general terms, I mean, that's sort of the technique that you use uh, or that I use all along. You know, you get rid of the big chunks of stuff, you know, with a big old eraser, make it as big as possible. And then you go one way or another and fine tune it. Um, let's see, are we starting Photoshop here? Now, one thing that you had mentioned uh, in your write-up that was interesting, and it was a point I wanted to make about this, is you mentioned that this image was taken on a, the, the picture of you was taken on a real sunny day. Yeah, it okay. was. I had to darken it up. Okay. That's important to, to, to keep in mind, too, when you're doing this sort of manipulation, is to match up, sort of, do as best you can to sort of match up the tone. Uh, of that. Um, things look different in different light, and things look different in natural light versus uh, artificial light. And as such, if you're taking a picture, let's say, that was taken in natural light and mixing it with something that is in artificial light, the skin tones are going to look off. So you can go in and adjust uh, the color. Um, let's see. Do it was the lasso tool. That's the lasso tool. Okay, there we go. And that was used for Okay. Got all, the tiny chunks. all right. Excellent. And then I used also a smudge tool. Okay. Parts to make it even. Okay. There's so, three different versions of that lasso tool there. Did you know that? Yeah, there, I was messing with that too because. Yeah. And the one in the middle, uh, you can eliminate the amount of smudging you have to do 
if you if you tell it to feather by one or two. Okay. Pieces. Yeah, I noticed that too, and I did use that. Okay. Good. Cat lover. Anyone anyway, notice that the giraffe I'm holding is a giraffe on the wall? No, I did not. That, that <laughs> I didn't notice that too until I got home when I was showing like my boyfriends. I'm like, oh look what I did. <laughs> wow, that, that worked out good. Yeah. Um, now this will be interesting because as you put things together, now you might say, you know, when would you do something like this? Well, there's a lot of opportunities for you to create a collage or a montage of, of photographs and all that. The thing to keep in mind, though, is if you're bringing things together from multiple sources, you want to try to match them up as much as you can, like as far, in the case of images, as far as the, the coloring and, and, and the, the brightness and so on. We'll even notice that when we talk about audio. If you're going to, let's say, piece together something, you know, you may have one person that talks really quiet, and you may have another person that talks really loud. Well, you know, I hate when, you know, if you have a recording like that, someone's talking very quiet, and you turn it up, then when the loud talker talks, you know, you blow your ears out, all right? So it's nice to try to get a, a leveling and a consistency of it, like in terms of, you know, with audio, it's in terms of volume, you know? With something like this, it would be terms of color and what's called white balance. Again, the idea of white balance is that if you took a plain sheet of white paper and took a photo of it under different kind of lighting, it would look a little bit different. You know, it might have a goldish tint under one kind of lighting and, and a bluish tint under other kind of lighting. All right, good job. Let's see. What else do we have? Look at Grumpy Thomas first. Okay, Grumpy Thomas, if you notice, and again, we're not going to have the best lighting in here, but we have, I can't quite tell whose face that is. Is that anyone? No, uh, just maybe that from church. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was I was looking, thinking it was maybe some celebrity or something, <laughs> looking real close, and it's like, it didn't ring a bell. But there's a face of a person on Thomas instead, and a little drawing for that. How did you do this? Uh, well, both of those pictures are mine. Uh, okay. I simply took the picture of the face, put it, you know, on his the front of the engine, and then uh, I couldn't figure out how to get the clouds, so I simply went to Word. Okay. And and you know inserted a, right. an, a, a clip art, right. and threw a text box in it, and then I did a print screen, threw that into paint, <laughs> right. and then I whittled it down, and then I made it its own separate picture and just added it on top. You know, the funny thing is, is you know, how, how do I say, how, how do I want to say this? I, I think that's half your job is developing multimedia is like, mixing tools together that even if they weren't ways that they were intended to or whatever, you know. Uh, when I do this, I'm constantly looking to a program to convert it from this format to that format so I can import it into this and I can, you know, you, you have all these little things and you kind of have to be, in a way, a jack of all trades and, and, and that's there's a very resource, resourceful way to do it. Now, you might be able to do this in another application, but Gee, Word is something that you know and has a lot of nice little templates for that sort of thing. is ideal for something like this. So um, don't think that if you do something in a tool, that means you're only going to do it in that tool. You know, use what you can, you know, and, 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 and to get the job done, I guess would be my suggestion. So it's very resourceful that way. If I make any comment about this, again, this could have uh, done with a little bit of balancing with the rest of the image. You know, the, that, that probably could have helped. All right, let's see who's next. Where do they go? I'll return the list. All right, here we go. You want to care to explain how that? Um, I used GIMP and okay. I just kind of made a few layers, cut out the face, and um, inserted a bull terrier. All right. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, it looks to me, was, was the original person wearing a hat? 
Mm -hmm. So that's that hat belongs to this body. Mm -hmm. Was the picture of the dog? Was his head tilted? No. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. How did you get that? Um, I just used like the rotation tool okay. or whatever. After I had already selected and cut around and formed it out or whatever. All right. And then put that layer underneath. All right. Very good. So I would assume the dog's head was naturally vertically, mm -hmm. and so what you did is you used the rotation tool uh, to do that. It's good to hear how these things how these things do, even if I'm not going to demonstrate, because it's good to file away. Hey, you know, I can rotate a layer, all right? And it's pretty simple to do. Once you know you can do it, then, <coughs> you know, it, it's a matter of just finding out how to do it in the particular tool you're using. So that's a great example of, again, the two pictures, they didn't quite match up in terms of it would have looked a little goofy if the dog's head was straight up, but you rotate a little bit and it looks, looks very good. Can you rotate a single layer? Because Absolutely. Let's go in and I'll start the GIMP and then I'll go get a cup of coffee and <laughs> check my... It only does the first time you load it though. Right, it's right, right. Because they have that writing tool. Right, 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 right. It's, yeah, it's loading all those fonts and, and whatever. The neck, of the, or the neck that the dog has attached, is that the actual dog's neck? Or <laughs> it was, um, like, you know how their body goes down like that? I kind of just, like, cropped it. And then he had a white like shirt on underneath, oh, okay. so I like blended the white that shirt. That really white well. really good. Yeah, that that looks very good. This is a fun class to teach. You know, <laughs> it's like you know I could be teaching the database class, and we'd be looking at you know customers have orders, and you know, but yeah, this is a fun this is a fun class. Yeah, I went to load that up the second time on my computer and it fired right up. Right, so. right, yeah. I actually like 2.8 better than 2.6 because you have the option of putting all those tools that right. scatter around the screen. You have the option to put them all in one window. You don't have that with 2.6 or they just... Well, I don't know. I used 2.6. I just know that... I, know that I, I did that too, but mine started as a separate window. Yeah, I had to change it. I don't know if you do that. Right. I'm six. going to go and... Just so that we have a picture, I'll take his picture. It is. It just thinks it isn't. These are a lot of plugins too uh, for um, exporting and for um, the filters and all that. All right, the question was about um, going in and rotating a single layer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'm going to open up that image because that's such a fun image. All right. I'm going to go and I'm going to duplicate this layer. Oops. Layer, duplicate layer. So now we got two of these. And I'm going to move this so that we can see both layers. So I'll move one of the layers and I'll set the opacity on the top layer so we can see both of them. All right. Even something like that you could do a neat effect of, you know. You know how like they did in the old uh, senior pictures of the 70s where you had someone and, and, and uh, you know, but you could do that. Now if I wanted to go and rotate this, I can go into Layer, Transform, and you can rotate, um, you know, 90 degrees, whatever, But or if you want to like fiddle with it to get uh, an arbitrary angle, you can say arbitrary angle, and then you can rotate, again, just that one layer. There's a version of Photoshop I'm using that can't do that. Oh, okay. On a single layer, but it's it's like an old, right? All beautiful, right? So again, and then you can go and say rotate, 
and now you have the two layers rotated. You could actually, by playing around, you know, make an army of these if you wanted to. Uh, <laughs> and, and you could do little things like, and again, if you wanted to have like slight variation, you know, you could make the one a little smaller, one a little bigger, stack them, order the layers and all that, and get a nice little, little effect going. Um, what was I going to say? You know, that's a trick that they use like in video games. If you look in the video game background, you know, the crowd, you know, they have a stadium full of thousands of people. Well, it's not a thousand people. It's like three people duplicated each a thousand times, you know. So you could go and you could do this. And by filling around with this, you could actually go and make it look like there's several one of these. And again, you could make them smaller, bigger, and all that. And it's exactly, exactly. I, I don't know. I don't know what started this, but I know my daughter all the time. One of her, uh, one of the things that she always runs across is, is people will take a picture and then replace every face in it with a person's picture. And often it turns out to be Nicolas Cage's face for some reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but uh, but again, even though this uh, some of this stuff seems you know playful, it is a good way to learn the tools, and, and there are some positive uh, you know practical benefits of this. All right. <laughs> there we go. Um, did did a good job again. Uh, you know, um, extracting it. You know, you can't really see like a, a seam between the two. You know, actually, everyone did a great job on that. Everyone that I looked at. You know, if you look at it, you know, like you mentioned, the dog and the shirt and you and the Hello Kitty one, you know, you don't really see a seam. You did a very good job doing that. The one thing I would say is it does look like maybe the picture is elongated a little bit. I don't know if you, you know. No, I didn't. Yeah. It was just a picture I just cut my head out of Okay. And I couldn't figure out how to like, shrink it now. Okay. So I used like the add path tool. Okay. With, like the dots around when you right. cut out. Right. And I kind of shrink it and I couldn't figure that out. Okay. Typically what you do is, is you, you'll shrink the whole layer. Yeah, I'd say if you go in and shrink the whole layer. Now, is that the GIMP or Photoshop? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, cool. And uh, essentially, yeah, the tool that, that you used was, let's open it up again, and it should not take as long. I do like the fact that it seems like each one of you did things a little bit different um, and therefore you know came up with some good examples to show the rest of the class oh here we go um, so you went and used which tool uh, I think it was that uh, this one yeah you can go and oops oh, not in this you can't <laughs> I was trying to figure out how to use that tool. I couldn't uh, figure out how to make it select once I had done the outline. Yeah, if you do it all the way around and like say you your clipboard and let it show up. Yeah. Um, file brushes. No, it didn't. Uh, it looks like a tool you'll find on Illustrator. Okay. I like the scissor one better. That um, one to the two to the left. Okay, let's see. Just sort of. And how do you get rid of it once you got it totally screwed up? It goes select. Uh, undo. <laughs> undo, yeah. Or select. Oh, or. Click another tool. Yeah, click another tool. Yeah, there you go. Then go back. Now, you mentioned you use the scissors? Mm hmm. Okay. It has intelligent edge fitting or whatever. Uh huh. So it just, it's a lot easier. Ah, see, that's that's kind of like you said in Photoshop, mm -hmm. that where it goes in a bit. It, it like it or something. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. So that, that that is cool as well. Now you mentioned you posted yours to Photo Bucket. Uh, is there a URL that I can pull that up on, or? No, I just did, I posted an intermediate step, and then I never. Okay. And when I finished it, I never uh, put, put it on the website. Okay. But if you want to see it? I got it. Sure, bring it over here. <coughs> Thank you. 
and be a folder called the root directory. There'll be a folder called screenshots. Okay. Yeah, it's thinking about it. Green shots and which one? Uh, do uh, Mia Fravner first. This one? Okay, that's Peter Fravner's daughter. Okay. Yeah, okay, close that. <laughs> and do the water bubble. Open the water bubble. This one? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Gave her a nose ring. All right. And this is a jewelry one? Is this just a nose ring? That's where I, I stole the okay. nose ring from. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to make her ugly. Yeah. You, you know, you should have warned me before I opened that one, man. <laughs> I'm going to need to go get some air. <laughs> The worst thing I saw is I saw I saw someone on TV. They like get their eyeballs tattooed. It's like good lord. Yeah, yeah. I saw it must have been the same show. I saw that. It's like wow. Okay. All right. Well, we're done. All right. Well, that's that's. I'm actually I'm actually grateful that you ran out of time. That being the case. All right. Eject. I got a nice uh, GIF on this one. Oh, really? I still like, I like that little koala bear. That's <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll go for that one next. Oh, the blinking eye. Yeah. All right. I was going to try and figure out how to get the wheels to move on Thomas, but I didn't get to it. Okay. Uh, which one? Uh, let's see. Go to. Uh, CISS 215. Uh-huh. 215. Okay, Nina. And... Oh, no. There's a gift for There's a gift here. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Should we be for one? Yeah, I was going to say, is there, is there anything I need to... <laughs> Let's open it up in a browser. Now, it's funny because, you know, it, when, when the internet was first created, animated GIFs were a lot of fun and they were all there. And then, then, you know, as people started getting into more sophisticated animations, kind of animated GIFs kind of went by the wayside. But you're starting to see on a lot these days because, you know, people screen cap TV shows and do all that kind of stuff for fun. I would say that there, there is a legitimate role for it then. Uh, in, in, you know, in doing slideshows. Something like that could be effectively incorporated into a web page. And, of course, the blinking koala. Now, the interesting thing is, um, what, or what was their symbol? I did, I did, uh, I worked on a website for a chemical supplier, and they had, like, a mascot. And they made, let me see if I can find this site. They made, they, they insisted on the mascot blinking. And it's funny, because all the graphic designers were like, oh, God, you know, this is supposed to be a professional site. You can't have a winking critter mm -hmm. or whatever it is. But they insisted on it, and, you know, they were paying for it, so they got their winking whatever it was. Let's see if, I mean, that was so many years ago, it's very likely they've changed it since then. It's an alligator. Oh, and the alligator no longer winks. Here we go. Here's the alligator. But this was bigger on their homepage initially.
initially, and the alligator actually winked. Now, now they said, it was funny, because they said, they were so insistent about it, because they said, our customers know us as we're the guys with the alligator. So you got, you know, if you don't put the alligator on it, they're liable to not think that it's us and think it's someone else. So as, as goofy as that sounds, you know, there are some considerations as far as branding and all that that, that make sense, you know, and, and that, that you have to do it, as, as dumb as it sounds. Now, as far as the alligator blinking, I think that was overkill. But again, it's funny, when you're working as a consultant on a project, you give your best opinion, you explain to them the pros and cons and this and that, but, but sometimes they want to go with a bad idea anyhow, you know? And I guess it's your job to say, are you willing to do that or not? Now, if it's, you know, if it's something unethical or something, obviously there's other guidelines, but there's nothing unethical about making an alligator blink, you know? You may think it's dumb or corny or whatever, but, you know, go ahead and make the alligator blank. And Rusco, yeah. Yeah, poor guy doesn't blink. All right, onto the blinking koala though. And it's actually very, very, very easy to do an animated GIF using the GIMP. It's done with that just appeared. <laughs> it's not exporting right. There wasn't the behind it. Okay. Never mind. Alright, never mind. I changed the background to have a fountain because I have a little girl I can see her doing something like that. Absolutely. Standing like in front of a casino or something and sticking the tongue out. <laughs> Alright, here's a winking koala. And again, this is actually very easy to do. I, oh, you know, <laughs> this is a, a, a quote feature of Angel that if it doesn't recognize a file type, you are SOL. I'm almost sure it is an angel thing. Oh, really? All right. Let's, well, let's try. Maybe I'm mistaken. You know what? We'll just recreate it. All right, so I There we go. Here's our famous koala. I went in and opened the koala. All right, here we go. Then I closed them again, because I'm an idiot. You know, you got to give me a pass on anything that happened after the multiple pierced guy <laughs> popped up on the screen. Cause... <laughs> All right, here we go. So, I went here and I said duplicate layer. Layer duplicate. So now I have two layers. And I went into one of them and just did something like, you know, I think I actually used the clone tool or the healing tool to actually go and grab that and paint over his eye with an eyelid. Let's make this bigger. All right. Then I think.